Hi, it's Karen and my man behind the camera. Hello. Bob's joining me on these ones because Bluto wanted to take a bridge after watching Halloween Ends. Yeah, he's relaxing. He's doing good. Yeah, he's okay. Yeah, so. He's hanging in there. Not literally, but you know. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that in there. I didn't mean to screw you up. Oh, my God. All right, we're going. Anyway, so this one we're going to talk about is Orphan First Kill. Awesome movie. Um, Came out earlier this year, 2022. It's a rated R, hour and 39 minutes. I always just have my IMDb stuff pulled up on my phone. So let me tell you. Spoilers, heads up, because I don't think you can do this review without this in there. Nope. This movie had a fucking twist I did not see coming. Bob didn't say anything to me because he watched. I, I think told he, you to watch it before you see it. Yeah, so I didn't nothing. watch. I didn't watch anybody else's reviews. I've been trying to really av avoid doing that because I had things spoiled for me one too many times. I don't that. because I don't watch stuff and I don't go on Facebook. Well, I think you watched this when this first started. Yeah, because I on, wanted to see it. It was streaming on Paramount. Um, it wasn't in theaters or anything. If um, it was, I don't go. When did this come out? Oh, back in like July or something. Uh, I don't even remember. So I mean, I'm just watching it just here. Just watch it. Now. It's cool. So anyways, this is a prequel to Orphan. Um, that movie was done, what, how many years ago? 12 or something? I don't remember. Yeah, so... Um, something like that. It was a while. Over 10 years, I think. Yeah, so um, that was one thing, you know, we'll we'll kind of go into detail with that, you know, during, that too, cool. during the discussion and everything. 2009, I'm thinking. I don't know, it just popped into my head. Okay, yeah, I can't remember. Which that one's pretty good too, because that was just something about you that. didn't see coming. And this kind of shows how Esther, aka Lena, got to where she was in that movie. So it starts out in Estonia in 2007. Um, I don't know whether to call her Esther or Lena. I call her Esther because that's what I'm used to calling. So, her. well, she ends up going by Esther, so we'll just call her by Esther. She is in the asylum that we eventually find out in the movie Orphan that she was in. We all know that she has a medical condition that makes her look like a ten year old, even though she's a woman in her thirty. So, what is that called for everybody out there? What is that technical Karen it's, term that it's you a, would call? It's it? a medical condition. What's so it called? Though? I'm not even sure. Oh, it's not a big long word. It's Probably is, syllables. and I have no. Clue. All right, sorry, I just heard. But there are medical word. conditions out there that can cause I that. Know. But I basically, know. there's this new. I don't know if she's just an art teacher and art therapist that was hired by the asylum to come in and work it, with the patient. It feels kind of funny. And it kind of starts. What with, the hell was that? I have no clue. Did you hear that? I heard that, but I have no clue what it was. My tuner fell over. Oh, okay. The, all right. Sorry about that. We're right. good. Keep going. Anyways. Um, so she shows up here. Esther is missing. And I believe that um, our person's name is. I apologize. Art I'm person. Sorry. I can't remember if she's <laughs> an art, art therapist or just an artist that's in an their art work. art therapist. There you go. That's who you should be. I'm not that crafty. Anyways, they kind of have their first meeting. The head guy there kind of goes over Esther's past, how she's like basically portrayed herself as a child, robbed people. She portrayed herself as a runaway and stayed with the family for like two years, so on. So basically Esther comes up with this very elaborate, elaborate, elaborate. yeah, <laughs> elaborate. Oh my God. Elaborate. <laughs> I can't talk. Elaborate. Oh my God. She comes up with this awesome plan to escape. Thank you. See, that's what I'm here for. So, um, apparently she has one of the guards that likes her to get mm. her like a dress and likes everything. Young food. Yeah. I was just like, <laughs> okay, this is a little war warped and twisted. It worked. So the long and short of it, um, Esther kind of uses one of the other patients as kind of like her go between to kind of distract people. Like she has her like trained, I guess is the best way to put it. Mm. Um, so Esther ends up escaping via the art and person. Um, actually, Anne resigns her job because she decides this isn't for her. Anyways, she goes ends up getting stowed away out of there and she goes back to Anne's place, actually kills Anne. Um, goes online, starts looking through missing children's reports, 
to see who she looks like, who she can impersonate. That's kind of funny. I should, I should I think, do that. I want to do that. I want to look for missing persons, adults, and see who I look like just to see if it's a match. Yeah, I mean, like she's just like looking through, and <laughs> she comes do, across this Esther Albright. I think it's the last time I, I don't even remember. remember. That's in America, and she sets herself up, gets picked up by the police. Um, parents, families in America. Please notify the family. Hey, we found your daughter. She's in Russia. She had been missing for four years at this point. The mom flies over to the U.S. Embassy, and they're like, you know, she, you're going to notice some differences. You know, she said she was taken by a woman, brought over to Russia, portrayed as her daughter, so on and so forth. So they're flying back to the States. Mom, the mother character, which I can't remember her name. It's like going over the family members. Say, say, well, I just remember the brother Gunner or whatever. Gunther. Gunner, Gunther. Gunner Gunther. Yeah, because that was a He's stupid a name. And Alan's the dad. I do remember that. I don't remember. Um, Did the rat have a name? No. Mr. Rat. Okay. Ratty boy. But um, they're flying back. Esther kind of screws up a couple things, realizes it, but kind of keeps herself under control. She flips out on the plane or something. Yeah, because yeah. she messed up about, I guess, the, um, the mom showing her different pictures. And I guess she shows her like this. Somebody's supposed to be like a grandmother. And Esther says, oh, I can't wait to see her. And she goes, honey, it's only the four of us. Yeah. And Esther kind of loses her shit a little bit and gets herself composed, which if you watch the original movie, you can kind you yeah, of know sure some stuff there. Yeah, I'm sure you an analyzation of that. Um, basically, they start trying to get her integrated back into... A normal life. Um, you know, she starts seeing, I don't know if it, I believe this therapist that she was seeing is also a friend of the family, but the therapist is picking up some things that aren't correct. But the police officer that was working on the case is suspicious. He's like, I don't, he, for some reason, is just not feeling that this is Esther. Mm -hmm. So the parents go out one night, the older brother's like, at home with her and they're like you gotta watch her and everything well she's esther's developing a close bond with alan the dad of course like he's an artist and if you've watched the first orphan esther is an artist as well she does her older man yeah and she starts having a thing for alan but anyways i digress um the brother's having a party there's a little bit of conflict between esther and gunner gunther whatever the hell his name is douchebag boy um and in the middle of all this, the officer that was investigating the case shows up and it was like, oh, I just want to, you know, see your parents, da, da, da. And Gunther's like, or Gunnar, whatever the hell his name is, was like, they're not here. And he goes, well, can I use the bathroom before I leave? He goes up and actually is looking for something to see if Esther's really Esther. Well, he ends up taking this record, yes? If he was actually doing that, and that would be, isn't that like illegal? So even I, if you did find something, that would be an illegal search. And it would I be think it would be. All right. I just wanted to ask you that while we're getting this part. If I think of something, I'll raise my hand like in school. I thought that even if he did I, find something, that I he thought would be, that it as would well, be because technically, but I mean, he could also argue, well, I was invited into the house, but I mean. Well, he could, by a minor. Oh, by a minor, though. That's is that just, a lot? He's not the owner. He's a kid. Is that kind or not? That's I mean, just I, it. I mean, I know, some, of the, some of the legal thing, ins and outs, because I was even thinking, yeah. now, I'm like, how went the legal out? But that's where my mind I digresses. Know. I think too. it's shit like that, too. So um, Esther kind of sets it up that to make it look like she's still home, sneaks out. The parents come home. Um, <sighs> the mother finds her book that she has. And finds like these different things. Well, then she finds a picture of the police officer and the address. And mom figures out Esther's not there. We go to the police officer. He takes off the fingerprint. It doesn't match. And I love how these people in these horror in these movies leave knives laying around just for anybody to grab. Because what he, he went and got a drink. He had cut a lemon beforehand. Left the knife sitting there. While Esther grabbed the knife, started stabbing him. You should have grabbed the lemon and smashed the lemon in his face and burned his eyes and stabbed him. <laughs> So, anyways, he's laying on the floor, bleeding out. All of a sudden, the mother shows up and shoots the officer. And you're like, yeah, you go, girl. I was sitting here at that point going, what in the actual fuck? Well, here it turns out, Gunner, Gunther, douchebag boy, mm -hmm. um, actually killed the original Esther. 
And the mother covered it up because she didn't want to lose both. I couldn't tell if it was on purpose or accident because he really doesn't seem to give a shit. That no, he, he didn't. He's like, I'll kill you. Like, I yeah, he shit. was like, like a real. I mean, he probably had some issues. I mean, she said mom yeah. was describing it as things went a little too far and he killed her. It's what I well, gather. Little, but I think stuff. too, at that point, you know, cause they were saying this happened like four years ago. He's 16. He was, she was 12. Um, he, he was, was 12 at that point. So I'm guessing Esther would have been maybe six or eight, yeah. depending um, how old Esther, like I, they didn't really say how old Esther was when she went missing. The Esther, not our impersonator. Yeah, that's fine. So basically, um, well, at this point, after mom kills the cop, I was just kind of, because mom's like, yeah, mom comes in, just cleans up after her children. You know, she's just always nonchalant yeah. about it. And she basically, you know, explains to who's the girl, who Lena, who's impersonating Esther, like, she points the gun at her and she's like, okay, what the fuck is your story? So um, we kind of get the story of what happened to Esther, who was missing. And mom rehashing, so you're a 30 year old dwarf that was in an institute in Russia and escaped over here by impersonating my dead daughter. And she basically says, So basically, here's how things are going to go. Mm -hmm. She's like, We're going to have to work together. You're going to, I can't, it would be too hard on Alan if you, if Esther disappears twice, because actually things are going better since Esther has returned like Alan's getting back to his normal self and their relationship's improving. She's getting laid more. Yeah, she's getting some sex now too. But anyways, <laughs> so basically she's like you're going to you you signed up for this. You're going to play the part. So it kind of explains like why the mother and the brother were kind of acting certain ways earlier in the movie. And the father now. was like, "Yeah, thank you." Yeah, cuz that's all I he, didn't, no. he was just thankful his daughter was yeah. home. So it just comes down like mother is going to mold this Esther into the way Esther was or should have been. Mm -hmm. So she's like, here's, you know, they're going back to the therapist and she's like, okay, here's how we're going to play this. And they end up having a session to the point. I actually thought Esther overplayed it because the way the therapist was reacting. But then afterwards, like she's doing her um, no, she's recording them. And she said, everything seems like she's well adjusting. She's doing well, you know, case closed. Like, and I, the way things were going with that scene, I'm like, mm, I, I don't know. I feel like it's being Only you would have picked up overhyped, that. overplayed. But I mean, this is also me knowing yeah, I know. the background. Everybody so. kind of knows. Yeah. But no, knowing, okay. Although I meant you knowing how to pick up. No, no, no. Like I meant knowing like, job. okay, this is what's going on right now. And the mother is coaching her. Yeah. You know, to not make anybody mm -hmm. suspicious. That's usually the way it is in real life. So, um, the mother also lets the son know, okay, here's what's going on. We have to play it like this. And I think that's part of where his attitude comes from. Because he's like, because basically he confronts Esther and says, basically, I own you, bitch. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of the wrong thing to say to her. Because she basically is like, fuck you. I will show you. Yeah. And... You know, I think with him, he's like, well, I did it once and got away with it. I'll do it. I can do it again. No problem. So um, it kind of comes down at this point. It becomes kind of a power struggle between the mother and the son and Esther. And then, who, you, what, who do you root for? Yeah. yeah. And at this point, it was like the mother starts really treating her like a child to, and it kind of starts pissing her off a little yeah. bit well um well bob was asking me because it was like the one dinner scene like she was drugging her food mm. and she goes was she trying to kill her or just i said well she made a comment that you're going to sleep well tonight but i couldn't see what was on the prescription bottle because it was kind of quick i thought you would have been able to oh, and, I know what that is. <laughs> and um what it is is esther befriends this rat that lives in the one vent and she takes her food to her room feeds it to the rat well because i'm thinking it was something just to put Esther to sleep, but because of the amount and the smaller body of the rat, it kills the rat. So this kind of sets Esther off. So she tries to get revenge and she makes mom a protein smoothie with the rat body in it, but you don't find out until mom dumps it down. I was there, I was like, oh, I'll take it. No. No, no, no. It's for mummy. It's <laughs> yeah. for mummy. I like that. I'm sure sitting it, there. Yeah. I'm like, okay, what did she do to it? Because she's very adamant about dad not drinking it. Yeah. So we go to this the train station, 
because dad's been painting again. So he's going to visit a friend that owns an art gallery to try to get his, get himself back out there. I guess he was pretty much a, well, I'm not going to say famous, well-known artist and, you know, to get his name back out there. But he was also taking something that Esther did to show to a friend who run, ran a school, which I'm thinking, okay, problem solved. Get her enrolled in the school and buy. Yeah. You know, that's what I thought at that point. But here, then Esther tries to go up to the platform and kill the mother and the son. It doesn't go according to plan. The shit kind of hits the fan at this point. Um, Because they're basically at the point, we're done with you, bitch. We're taking you out. So they're trying to leave the train station. Esther fights mom, sprays the son with pepper spray. That was kind of funny. And she takes off with mom's Land Rover, which I'm like, how the fuck are you seeing over the dashboard? Um. Police eventually find her, get her back home, and they're at the point, you know, we're taking her out. So they're going to try to make it look like a suicide. Doesn't quite go that way. Um, fight ensues with all of them. Um, Esther kills the son who's trying to kill her. With The mother shows up. They end up fighting in the kitchen. Somehow there's a fire erupts in the kitchen. They end up on the roof. Dad shows up at home. Because mom's plan at this point is, I'm going to expose you as a con artist that was trying to play on our, you know, because she's like. Well, how is she going to explain what happened to her daughter then? <laughs> well, they wouldn't have had to because she said, you know, she was like, well, I'll expose you as a con artist and they're not going to believe somebody from an institute. So anyways, they eventually get out on the roof. Um, Dad gets home. The house is on fire. Dad tries to come out and save them. Um, his wife's yelling, you know, it's not Esther, it's not Esther. And Esther's yelling, daddy, help me, daddy, help me. Well, mom ends up losing her grip and falling to the ground and dying. Dad saves Esther. They're standing up on the roof. He's rubbing her face. All of a sudden, her teeth come loose. And he's like, oh my God, who are you? And she's trying to say, you know, Alan, I did it for us. I love you. And he calls her a freak. Bob thought he just fell off the roof. I, I think she put. I I thought she pushed. So if anybody, I don't know. If she felt bad about it. Like, well, uh, I think she did afterwards. Yeah. But then she kind of looked, and then she's like, "Yeah, whatever. Screw this." So um, this is kind of the scene we both agree could have been. It was kind of pointless. Yeah. She kind of goes back in the house, gets herself situated while this the house is totally in flames. Wouldn't you want to look messed up if you escaped the burning right. house? Right, but I mean, she changes a couple things, like, not doctors herself up, but kind of doesn't look like she's been through hell and back, and right. just walks through the house and out the front door. The flames are, when you're like, ow, oh, it's hot! And the Shit. way you could tell, like, it went, the way it was, so it fake. was, yeah. And then it ends that she's sitting in the therapist's office, and they're talking, they're like, oh my God, this poor girl, she's been abducted, now she lost her whole family, what are we going to do with her now? And, put her in orphanage. and the therapist is like, I've contacted a very reputable orphanage, we're going to get her, we'll put her in there. Who wouldn't want to adopt Esther? And that's basically it. Yeah, so if you watch this and then watch the first one. That's how you yeah, if you want to watch it that way, if you haven't watched the first one. Um, a couple things, like we said, because with the time with the difference um looking at the actress that plays esther you can tell she's a little more mature in this one i can let that slide which Just, you can't help it i mean people get older but right because she was what 15 ish no i thought she was like 10 or something no i think she was a teenager when that first one was done i'll go check <laughs> i can probably check before you all right we'll see all right i guess i'll talk while you're pissing around right Okay, she was born in 97. And that came out in 2009. Yeah. She was 12. So, yeah. Or, right? 9, yeah. 10, and 12. Oh, seven. Yeah, she would have been 12. I'm sorry. Yeah, so that, would you say she was 15? I thought she was about 15. No, no, she's 12, so she's like 25 now. So, so right. you know, with some of that, like, you can I can let it fly, because you can't help it, you know? Yeah, she's, you can tell in the face and everything looking, she's a little more mature. Also, like... Oh, I'm just there. She is there. Yeah, that's what I. Now, what did you do? Nothing. I was going to show her you... picture. Sorry, don't get mad at me. I was trying to bring her picture up to show her, but anyhow, I'm sorry. I want to show her picture what she looks like now, but well, right, there's I'm... probably not a good one on there right now. All right, sorry. Um, another thing is like when they're doing camera camera shots, you can tell 
the front scenes are shooting them at a certain angle so you can the height is different and then any behind this behind shots it is kind of obvious but i can let it slide you can tell it's a stand -in. because you know what are you gonna do i mean you get something you can they, get around. people grow yeah. so i mean like those are like and those are kind of more maybe nitpicks, but yeah, I can let I that mean, fly you because gotta... I, I liked it. So, but I mean, it's a good movie. Like I said, the twist. I'd watch it again. I, I absolutely again. did not see coming. And like I really it, the first one. Well, I, I mean, that's one. Like I just said in, in the Halloween um, ends ones. Like I should have filmed like a reaction video, which is something Bob had mentioned about. Maybe I should should maybe two try hours to do... of that. <laughs> Other people do it. I, well, maybe we'll do that with something else. But I mean, for that, because I mean, like, I think my face at that point was probably like, oh, my God. Like, it, I was just like. We'll do a reaction video on you with Slumber Party Massacre. Yeah, I was actually thinking about that. There you go. Because I might be like, oh, my God, what a piece of shit. You'll like it. Anyways, so, like, like the twist. I really like the twist. Yeah, I liked it because it was. I don't know if I, I really want to expect that. I knew she kind of. She had that look like her mother knows that this isn't it, but it's like, why? Right. And mom at the beginning kept everybody and said, we know she's not coming home. And I'm like, okay, well, now it makes yeah. sense why she was saying yeah, that. Yeah, like she knew something. And that. So, like I said, definitely check it out. Like, if you haven't watched the first one, you know what? Watch them in this one and then that one. You know, because then Well, it then you be... won't know the twist in the original one because it'll be already showed to you in that one. This so, either way, true, you know. if you know what's going on, watch this one and then the one after it and see if that works. Yeah. Or watch the one, watch them in the opposite order. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what would be the best yeah. way if you haven't well, watched it. Well, I liked it. it for a prequel. I usually don't like that kind of shit, but it was okay. It was done right. It wasn't, like, stupid. I don't I don't think it was stupid. I mean, I liked it, so. No, it kept my attention the whole time. Um, it wasn't as long as the first one was. So. You know, it was just, you know, it was just the twist, you know, and it was like, when that came out, it was like, okay, now how's this going to play it out? It kept your attention. You're like, at that point, you're like, whoa. At Halloween, you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Sorry. So, I mean, like I said, I mean, oh, what was the other scene? There was, You said there was like a 20 or 30 second scene you felt like could have okay, been Okay, what do you think it is? I have no clue. I'm Whenever she smoke and listened to the maniac in the car. Oh. And with her sunglasses, trying to be all cool and hip. I kind of just laughed. Oh, I don't know. I just I, I just thought it was kind of like, ugh. that kind of was like thrown in there just to be hot yeah maybe that's why it was thrown in there to make people have to be hot funny and it didn't need to be in there to keep it serious because it's been it's been serious up to that point and they throw that one thing in there to try to be ha ha cutesy and funny and i, I don't know yeah I sorry mean, i mean you didn't notice that but i was like i mean oh. i saw that and i was just kind of like oh okay well she's just trying to act her age now but she doesn't look her age all right it's not a big deal but i i was like oh please and i thought i thought she was one maybe dance. I thought she was going to start dancing or something. I was like, please don't start dancing. No, I'm oh, glad the cops are far but good. Yeah, I mean, she didn't get too far I thought she was going to be like that. dancing and start singing, you know, like jamming in the car like John Candy and playing strings and automobiles going, everybody do the, you know, I should have done that or like what Ted did in the Ted movie when he like, oh. You would have been like, done? Yeah, I would have been like, why? You would have been done? Yeah, I don't know. I would have been pissed. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything to say about it. I like it. I mean, it's cool. I don't have any bitchy complaints. See, it's not fun whenever I like something, because then I can't sit here and complain about everything. Oh, my God. That's a first. I know. Anyways, you done? Yeah, I'm cool. Okay, that Bye. is it for this one. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe. Bell icon so you know when shit's posted. Check once a year. Yeah. You'll be good to go. Check my other channel, Karen. K oh, Karen. K Doll Games, Toys and More, Toy Game Reviews, some other things over there. A little more kid-friendly than we are here. We're kid-friendly here. No, we're not. All right. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.